Hey everyone, it's Laura and Alvin with Add a Pup Dog and Puppy Training. I wanted to talk about management. Management is how you get through your day. <laughs> management is what you do for the in-between times, between when your dog doesn't know something and when they can do it pretty much all the time. Uh, management is a lot of life, <laughs> you just manage. So management is generally a short-term solution while you're training something long-term. If you always wanna have baby gates up in your house or you always wanna keep you know, guest kids separate from your dog, I suggest that, um, that's totally fine. You figure out what works for you. But the goal here is to prevent your dog from being put in a situation where they're not gonna make a right choice or being put in a situation where they're gonna be uncomfortable. Uh, if, if you want your dog to learn to put their butt on the ground when they're excited, then every time you put them in a situation where they're gonna jump up, they're that much more likely to do it in the future. So if we wanna change the patterns of behavior, we have to shut off the old one and open up the new one. And this is about shutting off the old one. So some things that might happen on Thursday. Jumping up on guests. It's very common. It's what dogs do. Management scenarios. Uh, you can train it. You can turn it into a training situation. One person has the dog on leash, the other people come in and you're paying the dog rapidly for four on the floor. But that's also taking into account the dog's tethered, they're on leash, person's holding it, so they can't jump on people. And you're letting the other people know, the dog jumps up, then you move away. The dog has the feet on the floor, then they get pet. Put up a baby gate so the dog can't get to the door. You have an airlock so people can take their, their coats off. You could ask for sits over the gate, pay them for that so they're a little more chill, and then the people come in. Put the dogs in a different room altogether for the whole night if you need to. Um, if dogs just can't stop jumping up, they're too excited, or maybe they're stressed, then maybe they need to be in their own little spa area for the whole night, or at least for the initial arousal when someone comes in. Once everything's a little more chilled out, you can let the dogs out. You can let them out on leash if you wanted, practice greetings there, or let them out outside so they run around and get their yayas off then. Um, you can tether them, like I said. You can put them on a sleepover. Go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm having people over at my house. Go to your friend's house go to the kennel, somewhere else altogether. You could just have no guests. <laughs> Sorry, my dog jumps on people, you're not allowed to come over Thanksgiving. Um, and tire them out. They're jumping up because they're excited. If we give them outlets for their excitement, they're gonna be less excited and jumping up. Counter surfing. Dogs counter surf because there's something to find. Counter surfing is a self-reinforcing behavior because if you jump up and you find something, it's delicious, you're gonna do it again. So step number one is to save food. <laughs> no food on the counter. There's nothing to find, there's nothing to pay yourself with for jumping on the counter. You can put up gates around the kitchen so they can't get in at all. Um, you can put them out in the yard. Whenever you have to baste the turkey, dogs go outside. So you don't want them near the oven, you don't want anyone taking you know, a cheap shot trying to get the turkey leg, just put them outside. You also should tire them out and uh, make sure they're working for their food in other ways so if they're figuring out that the counter is this fun puzzle and obstacle course, then that means they need a puzzle and an obstacle course. Give them an appropriate way to do that. So they're getting their breakfast, you split up their breakfast on Thanksgiving to two or three different meals. They get it in one puzzle toy, you play nose targeting and go find it for 10 minutes in the yard for another third, and then the other third they get in a different puzzle toy or frozen Kong when people come in. There you go. Now they don't need to go find stuff and snack around because they're full and they're tired. Chewing on shoes. People come in, take off their shoes, put it in a closet. It's way cleaner that way anyway. They could take them off outside if they're muddy and gross. You can put the dog in the crate. Um, you can put up gates wherever the shoes are gonna be. If they sh chew on shoes while they're on people's feet, that sounds like a bored dog or a dog with a very odd hobby. <laughs> and whoops, tire them out and give them lots of appropriate outlets for their chewing. Dogs chew because they have to. It feels good, it reduces stress, they've got teeth. Maybe they're teething if they're little puppies. Give them lots of outlets for that chewing in an appropriate manner, <clears throat> and they won't have leftover chewing needs to take out on shoes. Begging at the table. I don't like begging, because they're not, they're doing what works. <laughs> Sitting and making, you know, plaintive puppy dog's eyes is a really effective way to get paid, and they figured that out. So making puppy dog eyes at the table. Put the dog in the crate during dinner. Put them in another room during dinner. Put a gate up you know, on either side of the dining room, however your house works, so they're not in the dining room during dinner. Um, give your dog their dinner at your dinner time. Give them something else to do. 
I recommend, so I'm gonna put a reminder up on my Facebook page on Wednesday for this, stuff and free some Kongs the day before. So you have low calorie pacifiers, things like yogurt, bananas, carrots, that you have on hand to give your dog, to give yourself a half an hour or an hour where they're you know, just occupied somehow. Stuff it in a Kong and freeze it, their meal, so that they can eat their dinner for an hour or more while you're eating your dinner for a long time. That way they're not worried about what you got, they're entertained with their own thing somewhere else, confined or at least separated from you, so you don't have to worry about that. And tire them out. <laughs> Again, get them working for their food like you did with counter surfing um, and give them something appropriate to do. Taking kids' toys. Dogs don't really know the difference between kids' toys and dogs' toys, so I would just keep them separated. Gate, crate, another room or outside, tire them out and make sure they have lots of appropriate doggy toys at hand. Um, if they just can't help themselves or the little kids are going, no, ah, squeaky tug game, then I just separate them all together, which gets me to this one. Extra kids in the house. So all of these are sort of preventing your dog from doing naughty things. Um, and this makes it seem like management is just how to keep your dog from being bad. But management is about preventing them from practicing old behaviors that you don't want but it's also about preventing them from being exposed to things that can be bad. <laughs> so if your dog is afraid of men with beards and you know Uncle Jim who's in you know beard competitions across the world is coming over and he's not gonna shave, then you need to manage that. You need to keep your dog separated so they're not being exposed to a monster and sensitizing themselves and having bad experiences. And you don't have to be in trainer counter conditioning mode, you just separate them. Ask him to braid it and wrap around his head or something. Uh, with extra kids in the house, this is especially stressful for humans and dogs, <clears throat> and it makes things a lot crazier. So if you're having extra kids in the house who don't usually live with you, I would recommend just keeping them separate from your dog. If they're under like eight, you know your kids better than I do. If they're not, if you don't trust them to follow directions and be safe and considerate and quiet and calm around other dogs when you're not there, then just keep them separated. You're gonna tire out your dog out before, in the morning and the day before. You're gonna give them something else to do <clears throat> somewhere away from the kids. If the kids are playing touch football in the yard, the dog goes inside. Might get stepped on, might get too rowdy, and then they start jumping, and the dog's like, ah, you know, biting the kids and stuff. Just separate them, just separate them. Little kids do not have to be friends with dogs. Um, my idea of a kid under like four, their friendship with a dog is you feel good over here and the dog feels good over there. You're doing your kid stuff, the dog's doing the dog stuff, you don't need to meet in between. That's all you have to do. Uh, we don't want dogs magnetized to kids and we don't want kids magnetized to dogs. It's just happy, separate play with an adult in the middle. If you don't have enough adults to assign to each little kid at your Thanksgiving, then put your dog away. It's just safer. Um, and not saying that your dog is a Cujo. I'm not saying that only bad dogs bite or your dog's gonna suddenly you know, snap or anything like that. It's just that everyone has their limits. Everyone has their limits. And some dog's limit is biting. Some dog's limit is lip licking and walking away. But regardless, your dog deserves to feel safe and happy in their own house, just like you do. So if we can prevent them from being put in a situation that can turn really bad really fast, even if it might not, we just should. Because if it does turn bad, it's because the dog felt scared and threatened and the kids simply didn't know what they were doing. And it's very sad. So just keep the kids and dogs separate. That's all. You could put the dog upstairs. You could, you know, rotate. Kids are inside, dogs outside, vice versa. Um, supervision. So you might be saying to yourself, dogs and kids will be fine because I'll be supervising or someone will be supervising. Or you assume that great aunt Margaret is in the room you know, nodding off, so she's supervising. Um, lots of dog bites happen when there's supervision because they don't know what they're seeing. And if the person supervising isn't, you know, intently watching every, everything all the time and knows what stressful dog body language looks like and knows what that dog's limits are and what they do and do not like, um, and knows how to manage the kids and can fly across the room in an instant then supervision doesn't do that much. Um, so I put supervise if you have supervision. 
That is, you know what stressed dogs look like. You know what that dog looks like when they're stressed. You know how to intervene. You know how to keep them apart and you actually can supervise. But simply sitting there and watching is often not good enough. Um, tire them both out. Tire out the kids, tire out the dog. So you might have noticed, this was on every single one. If you tucker out your dog beforehand, Wednesday, you're gonna take them for extra walks, you're gonna go on a long line and they can sniff everything. You're gonna play flirt pole in the yard. They're gonna get all their meals out of puzzles or training games. Thursday morning, they're gonna separate their breakfast into three different things, three different puzzle toys. They're gonna be getting frozen Kongs that you're gonna make on Wednesday, all sorts of other things. They've got other stuff to do. Um, just like you go to a restaurant with, you know, books and coloring pages and different toys and things for your kid, you gotta do that for your dog. Give them something else to do so you don't have to worry about it. And that's what this is. Don't have to worry about it. Everyone's safe and happy and you don't have to be in trainer mode. You just get through the day. It's possible. All right, everyone. We have uh, pictures of Santa Paws coming up on December 9th, 11 to 2. Sign up, there's a link on the event page, on the Facebook page. You've gotta sign up for a 15 minute slot uh, and that way it's your VIP, very important pooch slot. So we have some dogs that are coming that are fearful or reactive towards other dogs. You don't have to see other dogs the entire time you're here. It's, we're gonna be rotating it. It's gonna be very well choreographed, the team of elves. Um, so this is appropriate for all dogs. Dogs who are aggressive towards people, not so much. But if you're wondering, send me an email. Um, we wanna do this because lots of dogs who are reactive don't get to do special things with their family. Some of them can't even leave the house most days. So we wanna give this to uh, everyone, obviously but fearful dogs included. So you get your little VIP session, happy dogs, nothing stressed out, don't have to stand in line, there's no tables of food anywhere. It's nice and easy. And we've got, it's a little tricky, the mini three weeks tricks class starts on December 4th, so nab a spot in that. And uh, the 2018 class schedule is up. So take care everyone, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.